Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with sag -AFTRA Foundation and thank you so much for tuning in to watch another one of our conversations at home videos today. Um, before I hand over to today's panel, I want to continue reminding everyone watching these videos that the sag -AFTRA Foundation is a non-profit organization and we're continuing to raise money for our COVID-19 emergency assistance fund. This fund is working to support actors who are out of work with all of the film and television productions being closed right now with whatever expenses they need to get by day to day at the moment. So please check out the details below this video and consider supporting if you're able to in any way. Um, and it's my pleasure now to hand over to today's moderator, Justine Browning from EW. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this edition of SAG AFTRA at Home. I'm Justine Browning. I'm an editor at Entertainment Weekly. I am so thrilled to welcome one of the stars of Shrill today, Lolly Adafope. I want to start with the fact that the role of Fran is so nuanced and easy to connect to. She's three dimensional. She doesn't feel like a character. She feels like a fully layered, realized person. And I think that's why she's resonated with so many people. Mm -hmm. I would love to know how much of an input did you have on the character? Because there's so many small details and touches that I think are so easy to appreciate. Um, I mean, I guess, because originally it was written to be an African-American person. Um, and when I did my self tapes, I sent a British version and an American version. Um, so I think you wouldn't have thought that making it British would change it that much, but I think it just does change like mannerisms and like emphasis and speech and things like that. Um, and I think the contrast is between me and AD, I think kind of shows um, a lot more because of the difference between accents and nationalities. Um, but I think. I had like a little bit of input, like there were some things I didn't think that a British person would say that I would kind of be like, no, I'm not saying that. Um, but I think that the writing is so good and Fran is based on a friend of Lindy's and is such a fun, like empowering character to play. Um, but yeah, I tried to keep it like as grounded as possible, but also it's just, it is just a great character, I think. And a word that's used a lot to describe the women featured in the show, but Fran in particular is unapologetic. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it really is a testament to the void that so many people felt, particularly you know, women um, watching TV and film. Does, does that factor all into your portrayal? And, and have you been inspired by that mentality that these characters have? Yeah, I think so. I think in season one, especially, um, she's kind of like the foil to Annie, I guess. Like Annie is kind of constantly questioning herself because the outside world has told her that she shouldn't be the way that she is. Um, and Fran has just never listened to anyone saying that to her. And if, if that's happened to her, then she's either like left the country or just argued back. Um, and, but then in season two, I think she does start to show more vulnerability. So she is like unapologetic, but she's not like completely stone cold. Um, I think like some of her like barriers start to break down so that she does seem like very well-rounded. She's not just like this perfect person who is perfectly confident in every way. I really uh, loved those scenes, those emotional moments when she's having mm -hmm. a breakup with Vic and she, there's a, there's yeah. a karaoke moment where she <laughs> really sheds that tough exterior mm -hmm. the moments when uh, after they all go her and annie go up to the club and they're dancing yeah yeah <laughs> so, so empowering and wonderful and then you know she she has that that moment where she's breaking down and she's realizing that that she's lost yeah um, i'm curious how did you approach those scenes because of course it, there are so many comedic beats and and it, those have to be nailed but then there is that that balance that has to come through and i'm just curious mm. how prepared for those um well i think with the the club scene it was very easy because uh peter smith was singing in front of me which was <laughs> unreal and so the tears were very real <laughs> so that was that was just made very easy um and then i think with series two as well, like when I was uh, talking to my mum and having the very frank conversation that I do with a Nigerian wedding, again, she is an incredible actress and was also crying, which made me cry. Um, but yeah, I tried to draw on like similarities that there are between me and Fran. I think she's like a lot more confident than me um, and a lot more sure of herself. But then the like slight insecurities that she has are probably a little bit closer to 
like my personality um so the, the like the nigerian wedding scene i just tried to draw on like feelings of like being misunderstood or like not accepted and sort of being an outsider i guess um which like i was an outsider in a sense being like a british person in america filming like away from home um and she also has like left her home to like follow her dreams i guess so there's like similarities between us and yet she was also like a lot cooler <laughs> than i am <laughs> that episode wedding that you're speaking of it absolutely just so powerful because it's not just about a fa families coming to terms with someone's sexuality it's also an immigration theme mm. that's gone and yeah. there is again such authenticity the emotions feel so raw but mm. i understand that you had input in terms of how the event was portrayed the yeah i had a little bit of input so this the original idea i think was like slightly i mean the show is like very grounded in general like a lot of it most like all of it feels very realistic i think um but i think i just had a little bit of input into that conversation with my mum and also the conversation i have with my aunts where i kind of blow up at them and because i was just thinking like my experience of like nigerian aunties and like hanging out at nigerian parties like i'm not gonna shout <laughs> at them and, like it's just not gonna happen as, as angry as i might get like there's just like certain things that a nigerian child would never do um so i had a little bit of input into that just to be like okay this she does need to be angry and she does have to have this release at this moment but it still needs to like fit within a realistic world of like what a nigerian person would say to the nigerian like ignorant aunt um so i think i just yeah i i tried to like scale that back a little bit but keep like Fran's emotion and keep her anger there without it seeming too like real housewives <laughs> <laughs> what i noticed though about that episode is she really shifts after that mm -hmm. i i found that prior to that exchange with her family she had a difficult time in terms of keeping relationships or being vulnerable mm -hmm. and i felt as a viewer it was conveyed that once she confronted that she was able to have a realization and perhaps tackle those issues in a more healthy yeah. way? Did you yeah, I think so. I think like up until that point, even though she is very confident and things seem like they're going pretty well, there is like still kind of a tension within her. Um, and like there's moments in season one, like when she first breaks up with her girlfriend who she gives the haircut and she kind of, like Annie asks her if she's okay, and she kind of bats it away and pretends that she's fine. Um, and like meeting Vic is kind of like a distraction from that and she's kind of just like jumping between different things and not really like addressing um, the real emotion within her and then I think she probably doesn't even quite realise um, that it's the release that she needed I think it's like suddenly she's, she's got to go to this wedding and um, she's kind of dreading what it's going to be like and then once she does have that conversation it's yeah it's such a release for her and she yeah it feels like a weight's been lifted and she can kind of embrace who she is even more than she already did i think and in that case was there a difference in terms of how you approach certain scenes after that because i feel like by the end of season two she does feel more raw there's a difference into how she mm. carries herself i i found yeah i think so i think she's not as um she doesn't hide herself quite as much especially like with annie who she's so close with there are still a lot of moments leading up to that where she doesn't quite say how she's feeling um, and I think she probably feels like she needs to be strong where Annie isn't and Annie's going through this whole shift in her personality and realizing all these things about herself um, and Fran needs to be there for her and then um, in series two Annie kind of it's kind of like a role reversal and Annie is is uh, there for Fran in kind of her realizations of herself and then once she's passed that she's like okay I don't have to like support Annie and everything that she's doing she doesn't have to support me and I can sort of be free to like live my life now. And I noticed there was definitely a shift between how much Fran played into season one versus two. She does take more of a central role. Was there a discussion in transition, but transition between the two installments with the writers and creators? Um, I think even in season one, they said that the plan would be um, to focus more on her in season two, but obviously it's like, it's only six episodes. 
and there are so many characters that you want to establish in season one so there's not always as much room to do that um but yeah i think the plan was always even with the other characters as well it was like okay we, we've got to establish annie and establish these relationships that she has and then we have so much more room in further seasons to like delve into who these people are separate from annie and with her and the the, the friendship between fran and annie is one that again it goes through so many transitions and ups and downs and there's so many key scenes where there's a lot of tough love being mm -hmm. exercised and it's it's not necessarily always glorified and i'm i'm curious how you approach certain scenes where they are in conflict where they're being so honest with one another you know the dynamic between the two of them is, is so interesting to watch play out um i think for the scenes where you know when we're sort of like laughing and joking and loving each other those ones just sort of came very naturally um and annie and annie and i Adie and i just had like a lot of chemistry from when we first met each other that um was just very useful and we both don't really know what would have happened if we hadn't had that chemistry um but i think like once you have that chemistry with someone it's a lot easier to do the tough love scenes because you know that you have the foundation of like okay we're friends we respect each other we can fully embrace these roles without any awkwardness of like um yeah you know getting to the more difficult bits of the role um but yeah i think it, it just felt very natural it wasn't like um anything that we had to work really hard on to feel like we were arguing with each other or friends with each other but i think all of it came pretty naturally it feels very natural in the group scenes, which are mm. an absolute delight. All the yeah. people are interacting. Is there an element, I know there's such a talented group of writers behind us, but is there an element of improv? Are there rehearsals? Because it's so tricky to nail all of the comedic beats mm -hmm. and have each of the distinct voices of the characters come out in these sequences. Yeah, I think we, we improvised. Whenever there was time, we definitely improvised. Um, I think also, I'm pretty sure that like, all of the characters, all of the all of the actors are comedians as well, I think, mm -hmm. um, which I think really helps. So everyone's kind of used to performing and used to um, ad-libbing, um, which I think is part of the reason why those group scenes, like the, the office scenes and the scenes in our house with the friends, I think they flow really well because everyone gets on and is used to like that kind of, yeah, loose, natural way of performing rather than like, really regimented way of performing. And how do you feel in terms of the, the response this character has gotten? What have been the most meaningful responses that people have shared with you? And, and does that impact at all your choices? And not just with this role, but going forward, knowing how you can really impact people's lives with a role? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, one thing is like hearing like responses from men. Um, who felt like they engaged with the characters really well, which I think a lot of men sometimes don't watch programs with female leads because they don't think that they'll relate. Um, and I think people maybe would be wrong to pigeonhole the show into being about one theme, but I think it is like so relatable. Um, and even Ian Owens, um, he was talking about how he feels like seen by so many of the characters, not just Amadi. Um, and then also like just young women who feel like this was the show that they needed when they were younger um, and didn't have it then and wish that they had, but are so glad that it exists now. Um, but I also think I've, I've been quite spoiled in like, I've gotten to do this amazing show that's so meaningful and now every show that I do in the future has to be <laughs> as good as this and as powerful. Speaking of that, has it impacted the way that you approach roles going forward in terms of the fact that yeah perhaps being choosy or selective mm. is something that you find necessary um yeah i think so i think the fact that it exists as well maybe even more not necessarily the fact that i'm in it but just the fact that it exists i think makes me think that like there's no excuse for why we can't have loads of shows like this um yes. And I think, yeah, that having that experience of knowing how much it's moved people means that it's like an experience that I'll look to do in the future and seek out more rather than, not that I would have like just gone for any role in any way, but like, 
it's been such a like empowering experience to do and be a part of something that means so much to people that like there's no reason why I wouldn't want to keep doing that um yeah and not only that but the chance to work with such an incredibly talented team of people from so many yeah. different areas of the industry what mm -hmm. would you say you you've learned what have been some of the most valuable things you've learned being on set being a part of it um I guess like not being afraid to like have my input with um, the roles that I'm in. I think like, because I started out doing comedy, I was quite used to writing for myself and performing for myself and kind of doing everything and being in control of what I was doing. Um, and then acting is so different from that because you're kind of just doing one part of that whole cog. Um, and when I first started, I think I was like, okay, this is completely different to comedy. I'm not going to like overstep my boundaries um, and become a control freak like I get to do as a comedian. Um, but I think it always like makes characters richer when you do have your own input. Um, and especially in a show that is as grounded as this, I felt like Fran isn't so far away from me that I don't feel like I can put, like inject some of my personality into it. Um, and I think that is part of the reason why the character is so relatable and also why the friendship between um, her and Annie is, is so realistic. I think it's like not being afraid to inject yourself into a character if, if that's what works in that scenario. Obviously not in like a period drama necessarily, but um, yeah, I think letting yourself shine through the character is what I've learned. And I would love to go back to the club scene where Annie and her and friend go out dancing because I did read a lot about it, there was a really interesting response because it was a moment of empowerment where these women are out celebrating, they're wearing whatever they want. It's not about mm -hmm. how they look to other people. It's not an exhibition. Mm -hmm. And so often you know, women are filtered through the male gaze or the gaze of other. And mm -hmm. in this case, it's just, it's a simple moment, but I'm curious if, if as you were making it, you knew that it, that it had a more, even more depth to it. Yeah, I think so. I think that was definitely one of the moments where we felt like this is very exciting. Um, I think also just like it's hard to not feel like that when you're in basically a nightclub at like the middle of the day um, and there's like stilt walkers around and like glitter falling from the ceiling. Um, so that, yeah, that felt pretty cool. Um, and I think the other moments that were like that were probably the pool party, which I think resonated with the most people. Um, the wedding as well, when I danced with my mum after we've had the conversation, that felt like very emotional. Also just like seeing loads of people in like traditional Nigerian clothing was quite like trippy for me. I was like, <laughs> this is my family and friends. Um, but yeah, I think those, the, the, those were the moments that like stuck with me the most where I felt like this is such an exciting thing to be a part of. Um, and especially when you're working with like lots of supporting actors, and you can like get the energy from them. So like, especially the pool party, you got the energy from all of those girls who were there, who were like, we're basically at a party. Um, so that, I think that kind of like feeds into the actors as well. And I think Fran, I feel has to defend her decisions a lot, her lifestyle, her decision to be happy and make her own hours and be mm -hmm. a hairstylist, especially when it comes to her family's beliefs and so on about what she should have done. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, as an artist yourself, was that ever something you had to reconcile with? Okay, I want to go out, I want to pursue acting, I want to be an artist myself, and maybe having those doubts. Um, yeah, I think so. I think when I was younger, I wanted to be an actor, and I didn't really know how you were supposed to do it. And so I like told my parents that I wanted to go to drama school, and they were like, absolutely not. Um, so then I went to university. And then I like got an office job after university, but was still just kind of like, I feel like I want to do comedy, but I just don't really know the route that I meant to go down. Um, and, and then I, I remember I, qu I quit my job and then I like focused on being a comedian. I'd started doing like some open mics and a few things. And I was like, yeah, this feels like what I want to be doing. Um, but because I quit my job, I had to move back in with my parents. And so I think at that point they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> like you moved out, you got, you like moved into a flat, you did everything. And now you're like canceling it all out. Um, but then I think just, um, I did like live shows and I did like the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, um, and things seemed like they were going well. So I think there wasn't really like a point where my parents wanted to stop me from doing it. I think at that point when I moved back in, they were like, what's going on? <laughs> and then... Luckily, things went well, so 
they supported it. What did that live experience instill in you moving forward? You know, taking the stage, putting yourself out there in that way. Um, I think it like helps you like cement your sense of humor, I guess. And also just like know more about who you are and the kind of work that you want to make. Um, the kind of, I guess like the kind of route that you want to go down and like, because you are doing everything, you're writing, you're performing, you're kind of directing and producing to a certain extent as well. I think it kind of gives you like a hint of what each of those roles would be like. Um, but I also think it sometimes it like, because I'm used to performing and like doing a gig that is this one off thing that's not really gonna happen in the same way again. Um, I feel like I have to be like on it in that moment. And then because after that it's live and after that it's gone. Whereas with acting, obviously you have so many takes and like you don't have to be on it in every second. But I always feel like I have to be because I think I'm so used to like having an audience and that audience like watching you either like make it or break it in that second. Um, so that's like one thing I have to sort of like unlearn a little bit, I think, is that like I can like go again, <laughs> and, like just like try things out a lot more than you can when it's a live audience. I have heard that from theater performers so often mm -hmm. who they, they think that the whole take has to be nailed. Yeah, yeah. Getting it into your head that they might use a piece of take five with a piece of. Yeah, five. yeah, yeah. And then working with someone who like takes like 50 takes and then obviously they use the best one and you're like, hmm, <laughs> I could have done that. Yeah. 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 It's, it must be a really exciting thing though to, to know that you can create a performance using mm -hmm. different, different takes. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, have different elements be highlighted. Do you ever mm -hmm. watch certain scenes? Uh, and maybe in the moment didn't realize it was coming together quite the same way because, because film and TV is such a new medium for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Also because, you know, you, it's like spread over two and a half months and then seeing it come together is kind of like quite a revelation sometimes because you, you've only been seeing your bits and also you've been thinking of it maybe from the point of view of like okay this is what I have to nail in this moment and this is what I have to nail in this moment and you can't at every moment think okay over the series arc this is what I'm going to be um trying to channel um so yeah when you when you watch like if you like binge watch a series like I did with Trill um it's kind of like oh wow this all ties in together really well <laughs> I can enjoy yeah. it like a fan too yeah yeah <laughs> and you had mentioned earlier wanting to pursue this, wanting to pursue acting, but not knowing how to go about it. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that so many people who are aspiring performers who don't come from the industry, don't have, you know, those, those established connections. Mm -hmm. I think that's what stops a lot of people. Do yeah. you have any encouragement for how an artist can trust the, the path that, that, that maybe doesn't appear that clear at first, but that, that you know, things can fall mm. in place? Um, and I guess in my experience, it was like, okay, am I willing to move back home and give up like some of the luxuries that I've enjoyed to do this thing that might not work out? And I think if the answer had been no, I, I wouldn't have done it. But I think I just thought like, I'd rather try that than um, keep this current life. Um, and that is kind of what got me through. I mean, it might not have worked out and then I would have had to try something else, but I think I didn't regret trying it in the first place. Um, and if, it, if it's like a sacrifice that you can make and it's not like too financially damaging or anything, like I was quite lucky that my parents lived in London and like I could move in with them and it wasn't like this huge shift. But um, I think if it's like, yeah, a sacrifice that doesn't feel too ridiculous, I think it's worth, it's worth going for. I love that. Thank you so much. I think that's thank you so much. Great note to conclude on. Hopefully <laughs> <you're excited. laughs> and thank you for your time. Thank you.